Can I just say before you start, this whole thou shalt not lie, let that go for a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> One Sunday, I embarrassed myself in front of the entire congregation after too many cups of communion wine. <laughs> David's tea. So, cups of communion wine. Had you over-catered and you had to finish it up? Uh, yeah, basically, that's what happened. So, the rule is that if you bless the wine, it then has to be reverently consumed, is the phrase. So, you have to finish it. I guess where it comes from is that, you know, once it's blessed, it, it, it sort of changes, if you like. It's not just normal wine anymore. Well, as usual, the issue of transubstantiation has come up on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, if it's the blood of Christ, you can't just pour that down the sink. You've got to drink it, <laughs> because Christ wants all of his blood finished up. Yeah. <laughs> So I had, uh, like lots of vicars, I look after lots of churches, and so I had lots of services that day. Well, that must be very difficult. Yeah, well, there's lots of dashing about. You say it's difficult, it's only one day a week, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the hours are good, aren't they? <laughs> you can fall out with people, you know. <laughs> um... Not if you're full of forgiveness. <laughs> So, how many have you got under you? Well, at that point, I had three churches that I looked after, and right. so I had an 8 o'clock service, a 9.30 service, and an 11 o'clock service. I finished the 8 o'clock wine, and then <laughs> I finished the wine at the 9.30 service, and um, I'd not had any breakfast that mm. morning. <gasps> oh! So, at 11 o'clock, I'd given all the wine out, yeah. like, like you do. Given some of the wine out, given some, polished off the rest I'd, I'd of it. I misjudged how many people might come up for the wine. Yeah. And well, so... they're probably scared of the drunken woman. <laughs> <laughs> I finished the wine, and um, I looked down at the cup at the same time, and there's a little floater of bread that someone had spat back oh. into. Oh, no. Um, and that sort of made me feel a bit queasy. And so I excused myself at that point and I went to the church loo. Oh. And so I was unwell. Oh, no. Yeah. OK. Into the loo. <laughs> but you didn't embarrass yourself. You go off, you come back. Divine. Oh, yes. <laughs> Where is the embarrassment? In Thanks. the eyes of God. <laughs> <laughs> I got to the loo. And I had my microphone still turned on. Oh! oh. 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 And that went out uh, on mean, the that, church PA system. The acoustics in some of those medieval buildings, <laughs> the sound of vomiting would echo down <laughs> from all the angels, the stained glass. It would be like God himself was vomiting. <laughs> I'm wondering if, like, afterwards, did any of your congregation have a nickname for you or make fun of you, like, in subsequent weeks? Uh, they thought I was pregnant. <gasps> and did you... Did you use that as an excuse to make you look better? Well, I wouldn't say I used it, but I didn't carry tables for a few days and make <laughs> chairs. Uh, Sarah, what are you thinking? My instinct is telling me... Ah, my instinct is telling me that it's a lie. Because I think she's more in control than that. I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? I don't know. I don't know. It's impossible to know. Um, all right. We're going to go lie. All right. You're saying lie. It might so, be Kate... true. We accept that it might be true. <laughs> yes. So we're going to go lie. So, Kate, was it true or was it a lie? It was true. Oh! Yay! Well done, Kate. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>